I want to bring in right now the Energy Secretary, uh, his name, Mr. Dan Bruyette. I'm bringing him in because we've got those wildfires still raging in California. And Mr. Secretary, uh, I've editorialized on this program that those fires have a lot to do with the renewable energy mandates that California insists on. Am I right? Stuart, great to be with you. I think you're partially correct. You know, part of what's happening in California is that there's been a rush to renewable power, generation power, and they focus their investments there rather than on things like transmission lines and distribution lines, which in some cases may have caused some of these fires. But it's a, it's a case study, Stuart, in how not to approach our electricity grid and how not to approach the energy needs of this country. California's got a long history of getting it wrong on energy policy, and I think we're seeing just the latest example of that. They insist that X amount of electric power must be supplied by renewables, solar and wind. Unfortunately, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. So when you need a lot of extra power, they don't have it, so you get blackouts. I mean, is there any sign that they would reverse their policy of insisting on the use of renewables? Well, they need, they need to do so very quickly, and I think that's made clear by the comments coming from their state uh, utility commission, the former chair, actually, of their state utility commission. They've moved away from what's known as base load power much too quickly and much too rapidly. And their entire strategy was to go to 100% renewables, wind and solar primarily, and then, when needed, import power from neighboring states. Stuart, it's the rough equivalent of saying, I'm not going to purchase a car because I'm environmentally sensitive. I'm just going to borrow my friend's car if I ever need one. Well, that's fine until both of you need it at the same time. And that's what's happened here. So it's hot not only in California, it's hot in Arizona and Nevada. It's hot in other parts of the West. And there's no power to send to California. So we're starting to see these brownouts. Would you say you could extend this to other states and other parts of the country? Yes, you can have a climate change mitigation. Yes, you can have renewable power mandates. But no, you can't always have a regular supply of electricity. Is it that simple? It's, it's pretty much that simple, Stuart. You just nailed it. And I think it's important that we recognize that as we move away from things like nuclear power, as we move away from things like natural gas generation, baseload power that produces electricity 24-7, we make the energy uh, security, we make it less secure for America. We make America less energy secure. And as a result, we make America less secure nationally. It's very important that we pay attention to this example in California. And as we look down the road, perhaps anticipate what some of the next steps may be. There are some in Congress who are arguing against technologies like fracking, which, you know, is, is producing yeah. uh, enormous amounts of natural gas today. Well, uh, Joe Biden says he would end all fracking on federal lands, but the left wing of his party would go much, much further. AOC and Bernie Sanders, they don't want any fossil fuels at all. What do you think would be the impact on, on America if we stopped fracking? Well, I, I can't speak to the Biden campaign. I'm not allowed to do that. But I will speak to some of the policies in Congress that I've seen before. And, uh, you know, you can call it the Green New Deal or whatever you'd like. But, Stuart, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce tells us that if we get rid of this type of technology, which has made us the number one oil and gas producer in the world, larger than Saudi Arabia, larger than Russia, we will lose, in America, 19 million jobs. Let that sink in, Stuart. If we get rid of this technology, 19 million jobs are lost in the energy industry. Uh, that would be a rather large hit. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stuart.